Let's have a look at the menu system that runs the DJI Mavic Pro. I'm just going to launch the DJI Go app and up you can see here it's connected up to the camera. It's sitting inside. Um, this is your basic control layout. I've got this uh, running on an iPad Pro here. Um, normally you wouldn't be using this, you'd be using a iPhone. But uh, for all intensive purposes for this demonstration, it's easier to see on this bigger screen. So you can see all your uh, information. Uh, it'll show you your uh, connection between your controller up here and, um, and, and the actual drone itself. Um, and you'll also see your battery readings and of course satellite yeah, you're not going to have any satellite connection here as you're seeing in this big warning over here compass error move aircraft or calibrate obviously it's sitting inside so we're not going to be connecting to any satellites uh, you've got some different modes here this is the mode that will automatically take off here onto the left this one here is um, to land and this one here uh, sorry this one is to return home if you press this and then you slide it I'm not going to do it obviously because it's sitting inside this one here goes between your different modes of uh, operation and up here you can see what my uh, current ISO is my shutter speed uh, my, my offset balance my offset uh, exposure uh, the white balance in this case it's an auto you can see it's doing 4k 25p and you can see I've got 35 minutes and 19 seconds remaining on my SD card. Now, there has been a lot of talk about uh, you know some of the vision being out of focus and stuff. And yes, that can um, happen when you're using the Mavic Pro. What you've got to be aware of here is you'll see this. I'll just take this off. You got these two buttons here. One's a green box. One's a yellow box. The green box is the focus, and you'll see in this area right here. So what it's doing now is that's the area it's focused on. So you can see my two other objects or the, the rest of the background I've got in this shot. Everything's out of focus. Um, this is something you really need to pay attention to because uh, you can get your vision horribly wrong if you don't do it. So if I want to, for example, um, set my focus on this object here, I just press it and you'll see it'll pulse and then it'll lock in and make a noise. So now it's locked at that distance. That's my focus. Uh, obviously, if you were flying it, um, you know, out you're mostly going to be having your uh, focus set towards more towards affinity, so you'd be out at this sort of area where a distance is further away, and you'd be locking onto that rather than something close. That's just something to be aware of. Now, if I press that same button again, you'll see what I've got here now, and this is an exposure lock. So I can move it around to a different image in there, and then choose. You'll see how it's brightened up the image. Choose where I want my exposure to be locked. So I set it in a middle ground, for instance area here, you'll see what will happen. Dark areas, it will lighten it up. It's just putting it in the spot where you want to get the best exposure. So that's the two uh, options there. If I press up here, this is uh, general settings. So you've got video cache, cache during video shooting, largest video cache capacity, clear cache, um, flight logs, so you can keep all your uh, flight logs if you've recorded them on here uh, information about what aircraft it is so uh, there you go serial number and and what app you're running and everything like that uh, pretty boring stuff sorry I got out of that we go here this is your visual navigation settings so these are all the things that you can enable to uh, protect you when you're flying. So the first one here is enable visual sensing system. When forward obstacle sensors detect an obstacle, aircraft will slow down to a stop. Maximum speed using obstacle sensing is 22 miles per hour. That's 35 kilometers per hour. It's something to be aware of. If an obstacle is detected during smart return home, the aircraft will climb to avoid it. Forward obstacle sensing cameras have a 60 degree horizontal field of view and a 54 degree vertical view, field of view. Obstacles outside of these ranges will not be detected. Note, forward obstacle sensing cameras do not operate at night or in low light conditions. Obstacle sensing accuracy depends on obstacle size. Uh, so you've got to be very aware of that. Now, these things, you can actually turn them off and it'll actually give you a warning here saying, you know, aircraft will not decelerate and hover automatically when visual, disable. when visual sensing system is disabled. Do you want to disable it? I would leave that on. Uh, now, the downward vision positioning sensors here so enable vision positioning downward vision positioning enables you to control the aircraft hovering when GPS signal is weak while providing precision landing and ground smoothness uh, test again you can turn that off you probably want to have that on uh, there's the tap to fly mode which is enables horizontal obstacle avoidance if activated aircraft will automatically fly around the detected obstacles 
Um, so you can have that turned on as well or have it turned off. And then you've got active track. So in an active track mode, enable backwards flying. If activated, aircraft will automatically fly backwards when, when a subject is tracked as approaching. Ensure that no obstacles in the direction of flight before activating. This is important to know too because if you are flying backwards, there is no obstacle avoidance sensors in the rear of the, uh, of the drone. So you want to be very careful when you're flying backwards that you know exactly what's behind you. Otherwise, you could end up uh, hitting anything. Uh, and there's also enable obstacle avoidance. If activated, aircraft will avoid obstacles horizontally, otherwise it will slow down to a stop. So they're the two ones that you can actually turn on if you want to. And then advanced for vision sensors, um, you can actually change. Well, actually, no, you can't change these. Maybe this is something in firmware that uh, will be coming. Forward vision sensor, downward vision sensor. There's different modes here that look like they're not enabled on this early firmware. If we go here, this is the gimbal wheel speed, so you can change the speed of it here. If I go back, um, you've got remote control calibration. This remote controller cannot be calibrated when connected to the aircraft, so you have to do that when it's not obviously um, connected up. Stick mode, default controlled stick is mode 2. Change this the way the other aircraft is controlled. So at the moment I've got it calibrated, so up is up, down is down. Um, if you'd want to calibrate it to um, different modes, you can see those different modes here and what they'll do. Or you can actually completely custom change it to however you want to do it. I like mode 1, so I'm going to leave it in there. Apply, I'm going to go back. Uh, and then there's the 5D button, 5D button customization features here, so you can change uh, what these different buttons do um, depending on what you want to have them at. You can see all the different things here for whatever you want to change them all at on there. Now this is uh, your channel mode for image transmission settings. I'm not going to go into that too much, but you can see what's, uh, what, what's available on there. Here is your aircraft battery, so it's showing me my voltage, battery, total capacity, times it's been charged. Uh, and you can change the uh, low battery warning here. At default it's set to 30%. Um, so what you might want to do is actually put that a bit lower because you can get a little bit panicked when it comes on and you want to return it home, but it's coming in at 30%. There's also a critical low battery warning, so when it gets to 10% um, you can change that down. Um, and some more battery aircraft information there. Just go back and onto here you've got uh, the gimbal mode so you can change the gimbal settings to um, follow or FPV advanced settings so you can change your gimbal tilt exposure enable upwards tilt limit to 30 degrees so you can change that so it'll actually tilt up higher than what you want gimbal smooth track enable synchronized gimbal pan follow there's all these different configurations here that you can do and you can then save I'll go back on that yeah, you can centering camera so what it's doing now is it's centering the camera up um, and again you can adjust the gimbal roll too to see here yeah, you won't be able to see it on the shot that we're on now but you can adjust the gimbal roll settings to get accurate um, stabilization on there uh, we'll just go back to that one again you can do gimbal auto uh, calibration so this is important too check that the aircraft is level and nothing is obstructing the range of motion of the gimbal tap ok to begin so tap ok and it is now going to do a series of uh, little movements of the gimbal and it's going to calibrate that gimbal to make it level and accurate um, given that I'm on a flat surface so you see it doesn't take a long time. Uh, you can see in the background there where it's actually moving around and it's calibrating itself. Another good thing to remember too is when you're using the Mavic Pro is that you want to try and do all these things beforehand and then recharge your batteries because you can only do all these when the actual gimbal is on and you're burning battery power um, changing all these settings or doing uh, calibration like this. So very important to, to do this before you go out and play. Uh, there you go, so the gimbal is now calibrated and set. So now if I want to change the actual uh, settings of my camera, or well, first of all I'll just show you this one here. So there's a button here above the record button. If I press this, this now goes into um, photo mode. 
And so when you change settings, you're here, you're going to see what's available in terms of just for your photo, in terms of the sort of what you want to capture there with the, with the photos. Um, lots of other things you can put up there on as well. I won't bother too much about the photos because we're more interested in video with this one. So I'll just flick it back to video mode and I'll press the settings again. So you've got a settings one here. So you can put up a histogram and then I can, I'll just get out of this for one second. And you can see I can move this histogram and put it around anywhere I want. Really handy. And any time I want to get rid of it, well, I can't on there. I actually have to get back into the menu. I'm not sure why that crossed. Oh, there you go. I've got rid of it there now. <coughs> Again, be careful when you're doing the focus. You want to get it in the right spot. Uh, we'll go back to the menu settings here again. Front LEDs, auto turn off. So in here you've got an overexposure warning and you'll see uh, you can bring up the different things there. Take that off. Long exposure preview. Video caption, not quite sure what that does. Anyway, we'll go back into here. So this is your video size that you can choose. So your available format. So in, if you want to shoot in full 4K, um, you'll see 24 frames per second is the only current available mode. If we drop it down to UHD, we can shoot between 25 and 24. Um, this is actually set in power mode at the moment. 30p is also um, available. If we go to 2.7K, again, we've got 24, 25, or 30p available, depending on whether I'm in NTSC or power mode. In 1920 by 1080, there you go, we've got 24, 25, 48, 50, and 96 available. And if we drop it all the way down to 720, um, you can see we can go up to 120 frames per second. Uh, I'll just put it back here on 38, 40 by 21, 60. That's your video size settings there. So video format, here you've got your choice between MOV or MP4 files. Uh, here again, this is where you choose between NTC or PAL, what you want to film. White balance here, so you've got it, it's on auto white balance at the moment. I'll just run you through what's what's available here. If I go to sunny, I mean, you'll see we're, we're indoors here and I'm using tungsten lighting, so it's going to look pretty weird, cloudy incandescent so that's sort of under the sort of lights right now fluorescent lights you see it's not doing a very good job and then custom here so custom's not bad because you can actually just dial in whatever um, Kelvin temperature that you would like I found from before that the, the auto it works pretty well I found some of the other modes um, a little bit funky to use to be honest um, then of course we've got style so we're currently on standard at the moment. Um, so we can go to landscape. This is sort of soft. And there's a custom one where you can actually dial in, you know, the different looks if you wanted to. You know, you wanted to add more contrast. Um, for instance, change things up. So we'll go back into that setting there. Um, so then, uh, so then again, sorry, what we were in, we were in uh, style there. So then go to color here. So this is where you've got uh, all these different options here. I've just got it on the regular setting at the moment. You can do D cine like. You can do D log, which you can see is very very flat. There's art. I mean, I don't know why you would use something like that. There's black and white. There's Vivid, which is really, really oversaturating the colors. There's one called Beach, one called Dream, one called Classic, and one called Jugo. So th there you go. That's, that's your options of what you can do. So then if we go to this one here, you can see this is where we can have manual or automatic uh, control of our exposure and shutter speed. Uh, it's currently on auto, um, and you'll see what it's, uh, it's, what it's set at there. If I go to Manual, you can see I can change my ISO all the way from 100 all the way to 3200 and then of course I can change my shutter speed from 25 all the way up to a crazy 8000 and you'll see the screens obviously gone black I'll just bring that back to 50 based on what I'm on there at the moment um, and of course here we've got our 
I can't actually change that at the moment based on what that's on. Yeah, so in auto mode, I do have control here where I can actually I keep it but override and make it darker or slightly brighter. Um, I can't actually do that in the manual mode. You'll see that it's actually it's actually locked. So we'll get out of there. So that's pretty much it there. Um, down here, this is really handy because you can actually see you've got your little um, map here. You can bring it up and you can actually make it full screen so you can see exactly uh, where, you're, where you're located on these positionings. So you'll see, boom, that's where I am right there. Um, really nice and then this one over here also gives you a visual indication of which way the drone is facing so at all times you know whether it's flying away from you, it's flying left, it's flying right or it's coming back towards you. I will just get back out of that and of course you can see a satellite view which is handy as well or a hybrid view of both. Just going to go back to that again. And, oops. We'll go back um, to that point there. So that's pretty much it that I can show you inside on the menu system here without actually going um, and of course this is recording now so you'll see the real record indicator that comes up there. That's pretty much what I can show you that's on here at the moment. Um, again you'll see this is where your clips are and you can go ahead and play those clips and review them back. I don't really have much on there at the moment but good to be able to do quickly to see a shot and see if it's okay and and you liked it and you thought it was good just go back so there you go there's a, a reasonably sort of detailed look of, um, of of what's available on the DJI Mavic Pro